I have to go because uh, I see um, Ian Halperin. Is that who? Is this Ian Halperin? Yes, it is. It's His Highness Anthony. Great show, by the way. That Amazing. is His Highness. Thank you, uh, Ian. Uh, I I've been watching you. You you popping up on the news and stuff. People are uh, seeing what you're writing, and uh, they're going, "Wow, this you know is what, some man? crazy stuff." I'll tell you one thing. I'm not popping up as much as you because your show is going worldwide. I'm telling you now. Well, it is. You are ahead. You are ahead of the game so far. Everybody's left in the dust. They dust. don't know what hit them. The way you know, when I came to your studio a few weeks ago. I didn't know what to expect. It was major league, man. This is the and real deal. That, that's the real effing deal. Can I use the fuck word on your show? You what, certainly what can. Fuck? I actually prefer that you use it. Yes. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I Ian, I see something here. It says you got a couple of scoops. Now, uh, I, I saw some of your tweets and whatnot and uh, some of the news uh, stories about Howard. Uh, what do you got yeah, going with, with Howard Stern? Well, I'm announcing exclusively on your show. I'm doing a Howard book. It's not going to be too pretty. But during my research, man, this motherfucker is jealous of my buddy Ant here. <laughs> he, gee, this guy disses you, dude. Like, he's jealous of you. You know, no matter, you can't look at a guy's talent based on the bread. I always said, if there's one guy who scared me in radio, who I always feared going on was Anthony Cumia because oh, he buried goodness. me. I, no, I, I say that, man. You buried me, I admit it. Yeah, I, I just, <laughs> your lines were unreal, and it was great radio. But Howard Stern now, wow, he didn't like you too much at Sirius. I have some quotes about that. He was jealous of you, dude. That's jealous. interesting, and, and then I somehow get fired from, uh, from a Sirius. Hmm. It's a big loss. They'll never recover. I'll tell you why. Because seriously, I'm telling you, I've been doing radio since I'm 14 years old. Nobody made me scared except you. Because I knew whenever I opened my mouth, you had it coming to me. Like, oh. wow. Like, right. <laughs> you know, and, and that's a great radio guy. It, nobody could duplicate. But yeah, it's turned, man. I don't know. Be numerous people so far for this project. Interesting. And wow, this guy, this guy, this guy, <laughs> this guy didn't like you too much, man. Wow. Uh, now, Ian, Ian, I got to ask you something. Uh, what about yeah. wig gate? The big wig controversy yeah. uh, with Howard. Are you going to put that in the book? Uh, absolutely. It, it's, it, it appears, Ant, that it's a hair transplant. It's a hair uh, transplant. half his natural hair and half uh, extensions and stuff like that. Interesting. Like so they're, they've they knitted out. things in. Now, also, what about the relationship between him and his hairdresser? Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I, I won't reveal that now, but that is, fa that is infamous, that thing. And I'll save that for the book, but I'll tell you one thing. Also, plastic surgery. Numerous plastic surgeries. Numerous plastic which admitted, surgeries. Which, which he's admitted partially, but in my book, I argue he's had more plastic surgery than Joan Rivers, and I'll prove it. Wow. I'll break them both down. Now, I, you, don't, you, down. you don't have to uh, give any uh, specifics about the relationship between him and uh, his uh, hairdresser, but is, is it, suffice to say, is it um, some type of unnatural relationship? Yeah, it's it's a, put it this way. It's it's going to make headlines. It's a bit weird. A bit <laughs> weird. It yeah, it's a bit weird. Let me put it at that because I don't want to give away the whole. No, book. of I just course not. To announce first on your show. I understand. Coming out, and I also wanted to announce that. Wow, this guy was jealous of you, dude. Jeez. That uh, that I, I I kind of got a few hints of that over over the years. Mm -hmm. But um, he tried. He tried to ignore you there. You worked in the same building as this guy for eons, and he just ignored you because he didn't. Know, he, he, you were a threat to him. You know, I never he, saw him in the building, Ian. I never I saw. I worked there. Uh, I worked at uh, C XM, Sirius XM, for ten years. We were in that building for maybe seven or eight years. I, I'm, I'm not sure how how long we were in that building. In all that time. I never saw Howard Stern in that building. I, I worked the same hours that he worked. It's incredible. We, you leave the studio at some point, you walk around, you go to the bathroom, you might leave late one day, you'll come in early, you'll leave early, whatever. But I never once saw him in that building. Just interesting. And, and it was on purpose. It was on purpose. And I know it wasn't you ignoring him. It was him ignoring you 
because he thought you and Opie were a huge threat. He worried about you guys from for years, even obviously even before you guys all mm. came serious. But you guys were a major threat to him, and he didn't know what to do with you guys. I, I presume, you know, you all got on the same team, but he didn't see it that way. No, he, he definitely didn't see it that way. Hmm. What know, about? Uh, I'll get it. Do you do you talk do you talk with um, some ex employees of uh, Howard Stern? Yes, a lot, and they're not. They say he'll bury anybody for I, an extra ten cents. Yeah, I know, have never hard spoken hard. to anybody that he worked with that had a nice thing to say about him. They all have horrible things to say about him, especially uh, people that. Um, had had uh, used their blood, sweat, and tears to build up yep. the the empire, and then were just cast aside uh, for nothing. Yeah, yeah, and and they they say for ten extra cents he bury them and bury them for life, and that's not what life's about, man. You know, face it. You and I had major arguments on the Opie and Anthony show, but after the show we'd shake hands, we all laugh good, we go home, all and good, it was all good. I, you of course. Know, I, it was all good, but with Stern, man, he's bitter. And, and yeah. face it, I, you might disagree, but to me, he's a has-been. The guy is just not what he once was, not even 1% of what he once was. He's pandering to these celebrities. He goes to Jennifer Aniston's wedding. He, he, he's just masturbating all over them, man. He can't, <laughs> you know, he just wants to be part of that crap. He and always he wanted to. He always wanted to. And I think back when and when he first started and would bash these celebrities, I think it was a cry for attention from the celebrities. And uh, when they started paying attention to him is when he started shaking their hands and going to their events. And, uh, you know, I, I never thought he'd be friends with the likes of Rosie O'Donnell, who we used to call Big Fat yeah. Pumpkinhead, um, uh, <laughs> Kathy uh, Lee, Kathy Lee Gifford. Uh, who he just said horrible things about her, wishing her son would become gay, uh, like all all that stuff was uh, was funny at the time. And then you're like, oh, oh, he's in the Hamptons with them. He always wanted to be with them, so it was all a bunch of bullshit. It. Oh, okay, it, it, it was all a bunch of bullshit. My one of the things that I uh, uncover in the book is his relationship with Sinatra. He once pissed Sinatra off. And Sinatra apparently ordered his guys to put Howard in cement shoes. I kid you not. Cement shoes. On, on the record from Sinatra's sources, and the craziest thing is, and apparently they killed the wrong guy. Apparently they actually hit somebody who looked like Stern and buried him. And Wait a minute. Gonna, gonna Are you I'm telling gonna... me that Frank Sinatra ordered a hit on Howard Stern and 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 they they got the wrong guy. They got the, they got the wrong guy. And I'm going to give the name of the guy in the book and all the details. Now I know Joey Ramone didn't die from uh, cement shoes. It has to be either it's either Joey Ramone or the last girl that uh, Cosby raped. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Sinatra hated him. Hated really? Him. Like he, oh, he wanted him dead. What did Howard oh, do? Was it was well, Howard was pretty disrespectful to uh, Nancy Sinatra. I know he had some bad things to say about Frank Jr. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, yeah he, uh, he thought that uh, Howard was extremely disingenuous, and he thought he was a phony, and that he was really just. Uh, you know, just out to say derogatory things about his family. But you know, looking Frank, for, uh, looking for, to actually kill Howard Stern. Kill, Frank the, Sinatra the, 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 tried to have Howard Stern killed, and they got the wrong guy. They got, they got the wrong guy. Oh, my God. All, I'm all trying to think of who else, either uh, maybe Kenny G, uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Who, who, who got killed? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Ian, I fucking love you, man. You come out with shit that is fucking amazing. I love it. You're, no, but it's going to be proven. You're going to see. I'm not playing around with Howard. Howard's very legit. Apparently not. He, or Frank. I hope he. I, I hope he sues me. I hope Howard sues me because I have about a hundred thousand questions to ask under oath in court. You know, so. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Well, are you? Are you uh, I know you've never been afraid of being sued uh, when you write these uh, tell-all books about people. Uh, this one, uh, this guy has obviously unlimited resources, um, yeah. and, and and you know he holds a grudge, and he doesn't like uh, that type of exposure. What do you, What do you think? 
he better do his research on me because I've been on his show multiple times and he put me on for a long time. I'll tell you this. My barometer is I took on the Church of Scientology successfully. Stern's a peanut compared to them, and I'm not afraid of Howard. The truth will prevail. Truth is a defense in the American judicial system, and I'm telling you right now, Ant, I ain't backing down. He yeah. could take out people have tried to pay me off in the past. They've tried. They've opened their checkbook, say, how much do you want to back off? Wow. And I just look at them. I spit in their face, and I say, game off. You this, know, once this is huge. Once I get in the ring, I don't get out. I don't get out. And... Uh, Look, he's done a lot for the business, but he's been, right. he's a has-been, and he's just trying to be a celebrity himself. He ropes himself off. I don't know if you know this, it's serious when he comes in. It's cordoned off so he could walk in as if nobody could have contact right. with him. No, nobody wants contact. Well, well like, like, I, like I said, Ian, I never saw him. He takes that big limousine. They pull it into a freight elevator. It goes down to the basement of the building where he gets out, gets into yeah. another elevator, and goes back up. So you don't even see him through the tinted windows and everything. I've never, like I said, I never saw Howard Stern uh, in, in that building. I, and I've seen everybody else. I saw Fred and, and uh, Gary. I saw Robin. Sure. Everybody. But him, I never saw Howard in that whole building the entire time I was there. Uh, now, Ian, I want to ask you this, too. Did, did you speak? Gary's miserable. Miserable. Yeah, well, I, I, I assume. Uh, we all know that, actually. Gary had so much to do with the success of that show, and he still has to do gigs to uh, support himself and his family. I know. He's underpaid, and it's not him who makes the decision. He has somebody, this woman who they hire, he has to... Uh, pitch all these story ideas to her. Everything's right, gone. that's what I heard. That's why uh, the woman is also the reason uh, that Gilbert Gottfried's uh, no longer allowed to be on the show. Uh, he, oh, yeah. He's turned his back on a lot of the controversial comics that used to do his show because he wants to be all-American uh, Howie. Now face it, the people I work with in publishing, when I told them I'm doing Stern, because they let me do what I want, they said, well, you might do okay in the States, but you're going to sell two copies worldwide. Because usually all my subjects have global appeal. I've actually sold way more books in Europe and South America, all over the world, than I have in the U.S. Uh -huh. So on this one, I better sell, you know, this could end my career too, but I'm not backing down. I'm doing it because it's long overdue. And I'm telling you, I have a whole thing in there about how jealous he was of you and Opie for that's, so many that's, years. That's and, great. And, 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 and he... And he derogatory things to say about you. You were a threat to him, Anthony. I'm yeah. telling you right now. A Son huge a threat. He was jealous because he wasn't as quick as you. He wasn't as genius on radio as you because you have this way when, you know, you could be very calm, but when it's game on, I, I'm telling you, man, I've done thousands of these interviews and I'm saying it. I tell this to everybody, when it's game on, watch out. Game it's on. lights out. Ian, Ian, I got to ask you something else about this book. Uh, w w any yes. family members? Do you speak with any family members yes. of uh, Howard's? Yes, and, and it ain't pretty. The relationship with his uh, three daughters ain't pretty. That's and interesting. With ex yeah. With his ex wife, with his ex wife Allison, I get into all that, and it's going to raise eyebrows. And even with the current one with Beth, I'm telling you now, I don't want to give away too much details, but they're not exactly. You know, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie in the bedroom, those two. Because back in the day, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie used to go at it for hours on end. They is almost right now platonic, my sources say. Wow. So, uh, mm. you know, there's not much uh, rope-a-dope going on in that bedroom for well, he's in a his, while. Well, he's in his 60s. I guess his libido might, be, uh, might have taken a dip, you know? Yeah, I think because he's also miserable, and you're miserable and jealous of everyone and so insecure. I get into all his, he's had a lot of, dealt with a lot of psychologists over the right, years. Right, right, therapists and uh, stuff like yeah, that. Therapists. Yeah, And he, he just wants to be the biggest thing, and let alone at the end of the day, he's a lonely old man. Wow. He burned a lot of bridges. And then face it, there's only so much cash you need in this life, in this one life. Yeah. And uh, he just can't get enough. He didn't know when to walk away like a mensch. He could have walked away and gone out good. But now he's going out the way aging like hockey players go out, aging superstars go yeah. out. They don't look good at the end of the day.
You know what? He is so much older now than uh, Imus was when he used to crow about how oh, yeah. old and has been and oh, right. uh, outdated Imus was. He's so much older. Th I think Imus was like in his 40s when Howard was in his yeah. 20s bashing Imus. Uh, it, yeah. it really is amazing uh, that now he's in his 60s and uh, he's miserable. He's the rich, miserable guy. Wow. Yep. Yeah. The rich, miserable guy, Sirius. And I'll, I'll say this. I have a lot of friends at Sirius. But thank God I have some good sources there. But I'll say this. They made a big mistake to re-sign him for another five years. I think you're right, yeah. Pe people right now want cutting-edge stuff. It's a nouveau generation. What you're doing is cutting-edge, man. It's brilliant. It's going to get more fans in the long run. You know, people get interested and respect you more because you went independent you put your money where your mouth is. He never does that. He, no. He, he's on. He's been on wealth for his entire life. This guy. He just wants handouts. He never puts his money where its mouth is. And I'll tell you one thing. You say he's litigious, but nobody's given him a good punch in the jaw yet. And my lawyers are so ready for him. He's not going to know what hit him when we get into that ring. I'm telling you now, because I've been to this rodeo many times before. Yes, you have. Uh, you have, Ian. I love it. I would. Uh, I, I love it. I love that you uh, come on and uh, uh, announcing this book. I, I will read it uh, the, the second you have a, a copy uh, for me. Please, I want to read this. Absolutely. I want to have you on and uh, discuss Absolutely. it. Because, uh, Thank you. first of all, no, one, no one's really taken on this topic. Uh, and a guy like you will dig and, and get his hands dirty to, uh, to get that shit out there. And I love it. Hey, thanks, Ant, for having me on today. Keep up the amazing work. I'm a huge fan of what you're doing. And to everybody around the world, support Anthony, support his show, subscribe thank now, you, Mr. because this is the wave of the future. Thanks, Ant. His Majesty, thank you so much. We'll uh, talk to you thanks. soon, Ian. Thanks, yep, man. Thanks, Ant. There he goes, Ian, with the uh, wow. What do you think, Garrett? What do you think about Ian and a Howard Stern book? I love the idea. So Howard's hair is all real? That's what uh, he was saying. Howard had some type of transplant, but he also said there's extensions in there, All like right. like to to fill it out, I guess, something like that. I just have a hard time going all in with Ian's. You do, right? They, yeah, they. Never... I don't know. You know what? He's saying it, and no one's suing him. Ah, that's a good point. Uh, you know what? I haven't heard of Ian Halperin having to make any retractions, being sued. He's written a lot of these scathing books about people. Uh, how about the Frank Sinatra trying to have Howard killed <laughs> and someone actually was murdered? <laughs> I think there is a Howard Stern, Frank Sinatra bit. I guess that Howard made fun of Frank. So He did? Oh, maybe. wait. There was one where that uh, Frank uh, Sinatra was getting Alzheimer's. Yes, yeah. And, and uh, who did that one? Was it Billy West? I think so. Some, uh, do you have that? Frank Sinatra's losing his mind. Frank Sinatra goes blank. Yeah. He's like, I got you under my house. <laughs> it was like he got all the lyrics wrong. That's why the lady is a shoe. <laughs> it was a great bit. It was very funny. It was back, uh, God, that's got to be mid, late 80s, something like that. That was a long time ago. Put him down. Frank's new album, I Remember What's Her Name, is available to you. Now, hear Frank attempt these great hits. Luck being egg cream tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's it's Billy West. The new Frank. Love and tractors, love and tractors. I've got you under my house. <laughs> How does it go? I How's know it how it goes. Start the music again, please. Old Blue Eyes has gone blank. Chicago, Chicago, it's a wonderful band. <laughs> Old Empty Head sings My Funny Valentine. My Funny Turpentine, <laughs> sweet comic Frankenstein. <laughs> Here, My Kind of Town. My Kind of Town, Galveston is... <laughs> My kind of town. Here, interviews with Frank himself. Mr. Uh, Sinatra. Yeah. What's your favorite movie? The Manchurian Restaurant. <laughs> and the man with the golden nose, hey. Could you name some of your good Hollywood friends? 
Ah, uh, look, uh, we hung uh, the, the, we hung with the six-pack, uh, definitely ran around with those people. Shirley McLean, she was wonderful. Hazel Bishop, uh, Jimmy Davis Jr., Don Martin. Hey, don't tell me I can't remember these people. What is this shit? What did you have for breakfast? What's breakfast? <laughs> breakfast. I don't know what that is, man. Hey, cuckoo, baby, don't tell me, huh? Talk down to me. Asking me weird questions. Hear Frank make up words and sing. Hey, I'm not making it up. I really think those are the words. <laughs> Something in the way she cooks. Send your money now. And with any luck, Frank will remember to send you your record. Moonlight in Japan. <laughs> dial now. Dial 1-800-I-FORGET. Now get out of here or I'll have my legs broken. Dial 1-800-I-FORGET. To uh, tell you the truth, I can't remember when I started forgetting. Order now. She's getting bitchy. It's that time of month. <laughs> That's why the lady is a shoe. <laughs> That was fucking hilarious. I remember listening to that when they first did it and crying. That was so goddamn funny. They did it on the Channel 9 show, too, and it looks like they have a guy dressed up as Frank. And... Oh, really? Yeah. See, yeah, maybe that's why Frank got word of it and uh, tried to have him killed. But that's... he already had Alzheimer's, so he probably just forgot. Uh, maybe he didn't have it that bad. Uh -huh. Maybe uh, he... Sinatra and Alzheimer's shocker. I remember what's her name is available to you now. Here, Frank attempt these great hits. Luck be an egg cream tonight. <laughs> That's Billy. Tractors. Yeah, okay. I see they made a little, uh, little visual bit out of it. Oh man, how come he didn't try to fucking have uh, Billy West whacked? I want them all dead. All of them. Kill them all. Wow. That is one of the most shocking claims I've ever heard, by the way. Shocking claim that Sinatra tried to have Howard Stern murdered and killed someone else. Yeah, that's and Ian part. will expose who was killed when the book comes out. He gives you just enough to tantalize you, and then you got to buy the book. Uh, and, and you know what? I usually hate that when people come on and they're selling a book and they're like, hey, what's... Uh, What's that about? What happened there? Oh, well, you got to get the book. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck you. He gives you something, though. He gives yeah. you something like, Frank Sinatra tried to kill <laughs> Howard Stern. Who's not buying his book? I so want that book now. <laughs> I want to know who fucking... What a, an insane thing to say. And he said he named the guy that actually died. Yeah. So that means he's a famous person. He's not just going to say... Joe Schmo died. Mitch Mitch Cumstein. That uh, <laughs> guy was Mitch Cumstein. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got, well, you think? It could be a famous guy? Because he could just say the name now. No one would know. But w if it's some guy that they found and... Oh, that's a big mystery. Maybe, maybe, is he exposing something? You well, know, Howard was involved with Jimmy Hoffa's disappearance. <laughs> and... Uh, Howard uh, is actually the alien from Roswell. I don't know. Look, I give Ian the benefit of the doubt every time. Every time. Because he hasn't been sued. He wrote that Kardashian book recently. And uh, he's saying some pretty fucking nasty things about them. Which should be said. But uh, good for...